So you have a manuscript for me? Yes, sir. I do. So I took this meeting because you said this manuscript was written by Ngugi Wadiongo? Um, you may have gotten the communication wrong. This is one of Ngugi's kids that also write novels. Is it T? No. Is it Wanjiko? Nope. Is it Ndushu? Uh-uh. So which one? Mukhoma. Mukhoma Wangugi. Mukoma Wangugi, that's the one with the crime novels based in Nairobi. The very same. So, what's this manuscript about? Uh, it says here that the manuscript is about the gains of independence in many African countries and how they eroded as bad governance leads to dictatorship making life unbearable for those who are supposedly free. It also shows how those who live either in their home countries or in exile are scarred by the effects of this. The protagonist is Kalumba, an African who is in an exile in the United States, hiding out from a dictatorial regime in his home country. He is said to go back home to find his childhood sweetheart has hooked up with his childhood best friend. Ah, a love triangle. Do Africans do those? Um, it says here that they do. Tell me more about these characters. Well, Kalumba is a really interesting dude. His father was a school teacher who raised him alone and taught him his liberal values. His best friend called Ogum is a preacher who is killed by the dictatorship when he grew up. Interesting. What about the women? So we have Sukena, the love interest of the two men, you know, the one in the middle of the love triangle. She grew up dead poor, but she has genius and discipline and grew up to be a famous activist. Then we have Kalumba's girlfriend in the US, She's a Puerto Rican artist, and she's a really, really well-crafted character. And she ties in very well with, you know, those who are oppressed in the U.S. as well. That should cover it, right? I guess. Um, so what is this is a prose like? So, so it's really good. Check this out. Soon after the elections, fear was gone. Almost as if it had taken on a body of flesh. The space fear had occupied could be felt and seen. People spoke more loudly, drank more, made love more, and ate more. There were more greetings that broke into spontaneous embraces. There were fewer fights in the streets. Even the gangsters took a break. And people could walk home late at night from the celebrations. Disputes between neighbors were put on hold. Children cried less and played more. Once the fear was gone and freedom began to take its place, the whole country glowed. It seemed that the whole country was preparing for a massive wedding. Expensive dishes were prepared and a stranger could walk into any house and be fed. It was a beautiful time. Everything bordered on a joyous excess. It sounds really good. So how will I interest my core reader, a white housewife in Kansas? That'll be super easy, Noah Hall. Oh, really? Hmm. Maybe we could ask the writer to put a white woman as one of the main characters? Will she affect the plot in any significant way? She could. 
I wonder if there's a way we can get this book to African readers if we do publish it. Is there a way we can target them? And I'm not really sure. I, I thought Africans lived in trees or something. 